In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. This word came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Rise up, be off to the potter's house. There I will give you my message. I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, working at the wheel. Whenever the object of clay which he was making turned out badly, in his hand, he tried again, making of the clay another object of whatever sort he pleased. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Can I not do to you, house of Israel, as his potter has done, says the Lord? Indeed, like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, house of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Response is, blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God while I live. Put not your trust in princes, in the sons of men, in whom there is no salvation. When his spirit departs, he returns to his earth. On that day, his plan perish. Blessed he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord, his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them. Blessed is he whose help is the God of The Lord be with you. With Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. 
Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, Yes. And he replied, Then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. When Jesus finished these parables, he went away from there. The Gospel of the Lord. This past week we've had some great readings from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, just um, readings that really um, are the core of uh, Jeremiah's spirituality and his spiritual life. And some of them are quite harsh and hard to listen to, I think. Um, Yesterday, I think it was yesterday, but maybe Tuesday, he lamented the fact that he was even born because of all of the bad things. And I thought, oh my gosh, if there's any year where we can sympathize with that sentiment, it's 2020. Just wishing that um, this, it would, we could have a somewhat normal life. Um, today, though, he has this image of a potter. And if you've ever seen a potter work, you know that they have this spinning wheel in front of them, and they're going to start working on this ball of clay. They just whack it down right in the middle of it, and then they kind of make sure it's centered, and then they just start building it up. But if there's ever a point where they don't like what's happening, or sometimes it just happens by nature, the whole thing can collapse. And it's no big deal. If we're working on it, and it's the only piece of clay that we're going to work on, then we probably sit back and kind of go, but for the potter, they just start over. Just fold the clay back down, kind of form it back into that middle, and then start all over again. This is the image that Jeremiah puts forward for us as he's looking on it. He goes, see, that's, that's us. We, we think we're so important in this world, but we could be wiped out tomorrow. We could all be gone tomorrow. And um, there, it, it's a definite statement about God's power, God's authority in this world, and, and exactly where we fit in the whole situation. You know, we are called upon, generally from a moral standpoint, to not judge the person, but judge the actions. Love, this, love the sinner, hate the sin, is what we generally say. And I think the, the wisdom behind that is because the person can always change. We all know St. Paul's in this world that were behaving in very bad ways, but then had a conversion like St. Paul had that didn't change their ways. Everybody can have that. I think our world oftentimes likes to, to be able to pass judgment on the person and somehow make the sin seem acceptable. That's the crazy thing that I think that has happened in the last 20 years. While Christians are saying, the sin should be acceptable, but we should accept the possibility that the sinner can reform, it seems like more and more our culture is saying, the sinner should always be condemned, even years and years after the act has happened, and they've lamented and repented and changed their ways. No, that person should get destroyed. But what that person has done maybe isn't as bad as we thought. Maybe we should rethink. And it's, it's just this bizarre thing. So we're going to hold on, as Christians, we're going to hold on to the hope of conversion. Jesus always gives hope for conversion. And, and trust that the, the, both the gospel and the first reading remind us that it's God's ultimate responsibility to judge the, the, the soul of the individual. Not ours. Not ours to say, you are going to be cast out. But it's ultimately God's responsibility to do that. Um, he's the one who is casting the net and tossing the fish while we, we sit by and maybe do some of the work, but ultimately recognizing who is telling us which is the good fish and which is the bad fish. So it, it really brings responsibility back to ourselves for ourselves. 
instead of worrying about other people and their actions, although we do need to worry about the actions and trying to bring people back to a life of holiness, we should never completely cast that person aside, but trust that that's God's responsibility. First, we have to make sure that our actions are responsible, that our actions are holy, not responsible, but holy in the sight of God, so that we can lead a life that models a life of holiness for others, and then help others on their journey toward holiness, not simply be willing to cast them away until it is time for the, the reaping of the fish. As members of the body of Christ, let us lift our prayers to our Heavenly Father for all our needs. For the church, may she be continuously blessed with an abundance of divine goodness. We pray to the Lord. For those in the world who seek the truth, may the Holy Spirit bring them to know Christ. We pray to the Lord. For those suffering from the loss of a loved one, may our crucified Lord lift them up in their time of sorrow. We pray to the Lord. For the young people of our faith community, especially those who will soon be returning to school, may God guide and protect them amid the pressures of their lives. We pray to the Lord. For those who are infected with the COVID-19 virus and their family and friends and loved ones and health care workers, we pray to the Lord. And for the faithful departed, especially Sister Luanne Kilburn, May they rest in the loving embrace of the Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For those special intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers we offer this day through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, for to the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being, and while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of eternal life. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as a joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes to the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord. Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, in partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in their mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, and Joseph. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
please be seated. We continue to pray in solidarity with those watching on Facebook this morning. Uh, the act of spiritual communion, which is in the bulletin if you grab one on your way in. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. I became aware recently that the telephone wasn't working out here, uh, and so I've been working with Windstream pretty sure it's going to be fixed, they assured me, by 7 o'clock tonight. And the goal is so that I can, when I'm not in the office, or when I'm not around here, be able to forward it down to um, Bellevue so you can get somebody there, and then when I'm back here, I can then forward it and be able to answer it locally. But if you ca tried calling the office number over here, um, and it hasn't worked, I'm not sure what happened there, to be honest. Um, Windstream wasn't even 100% sure with all of the stuff that's been happening sure if it had something to do with that or, or exactly what. Um, but it is um, just as easy to just dial the, the Bellevue number two for the parish office, whichever, hopefully in the end, whichever one works um, the best for you is going to work. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.
Thanks for watching.